Hello everyone and welcome to the Dirt Rally 2.0 World Series. Today we're going to be going through the rally class and we're going to have our quarter and semi-finals to narrow down our finalists who will compete live at the Autosport next year. My name is Chris McCarthy, Katie Munnings is here once again. Of course you were here for Rallycross yesterday. Good fun? Yeah, amazing racing yesterday. Um, we saw some really top competitions, especially in the semi-finals last night. Um, the track in Latvia, you know, it was coming down to the exit from that joker lap, just going over the finish, and some drivers were just nipping it to qualify. So uh, I think it's going to be tight racing today. The drivers are going to have to be very uh, good across all of the disciplines. You know, we've got snow, we've got ice, we've got dry tarmac, right through to the really heavy gravel, and then the light gravel as well in Greece later on. So it'll be, uh, yeah, it's a challenging event, and the drivers are going to have to be very... Uh, um, multi-skilled, I think, across all services, have a good result here. Well, of course, three months of 36,000 drivers competing led us to 36 drivers yesterday. Six of those had qualified through to the grand final. So let's remind ourselves of who went through yesterday. And there you can see the names on screen. So two from each platform, Steam, PlayStation and Xbox, Daniel Johansson, Lucas Mateja, Killian Dalomo, Alexandra Hus, Dorian Baptiste and Dave Marshall were the drivers who went through. Some of those drivers are back with us today. A lot of the drivers who just missed out are here they've got another crack at it albeit in the rally class yeah absolutely it's cool to see that some of the guys that just missed missed the top spot yesterday are here i think we've got quintal dalamo and his brother actually qualified yesterday and he just missed it on the last lap in the semi-final so he's got another shot to make it to birmingham um yeah it's a different discipline though so the drivers are going to have to adapt a very different driving style you know they've got the road to themselves they're not going to be able to see where the other competitors are on the road so it's very much a case of them just judging the grip judging the conditions ahead of them um yeah in it to win it but it's their own race this time they don't have to worry about anybody else like in rally cross well of course some might prefer rally to rally cross yourself you're a rally driver you compete in the european rally championship so i imagine you're looking forward to today yeah i mean this is kind of my home grounds i love i love anything to do with rally and i've seen actually i've got my teammate here from the european championship he's qualified so he's an actual rally driver and now he's he's in the first group i think so it's pretty cool to see the transfer of skills across uh, the platforms like that well it's great to see isn't it it'll be interesting to see how he gets on compared to those who are just gamers natural gamers they don't have they haven't had the opportunity to compete and they have a chance to race against a real rally driver yeah i think that's one of the best things about this um this series is accessible you know you can do it from your home you don't have to spend thousands and thousands you know motorsport can be so expensive so this is a really cool way accessible way and also competing you know he's swedish champion so competing against some of the best drivers in the world well, we're going to keep an eye on that. Well, again today, 36 drivers are going to be narrowed down to six. So let's just talk you through the format before we get started. So there's 12 competitors in each platform which have been drawn at random into two groups of six. The three platforms being Steam, PlayStation and Xbox. They will take part in a quarter final with the top three in each group qualifying directly through to the semi-finals. This will leave six drivers in the semi-final on each platform. Each semi-final will then take place over two stages with the top two on each platform qualifying through to give us six finalists in total who will compete in the grand final at the Autosport show in January. So it's quite a brutal format really, isn't it? Similar to Rallycross. You get one shot at it in the quarterfinal. Perhaps the hardest stage comes at the quarterfinal as well. And then having two stages in the semi-final gives it an interesting aspect, doesn't it? Because if you have a good first stage, then the pressure's off in the second, but vice versa, if you make a mistake in that first stage, it's it's all pressure for the second. Yeah, exactly. So both times will be added together. Very different terrains though. You know, you've got really fast corners with huge jumps and crests and unseen corners in Finland. And then that compared to the really tight hairpins, uphill sections, downhill sections, and massive rocks that they've got to avoid with punches as well in Greece. So um, yeah, they've, they've really got to make sure that they can adapt to each surface and do it quickly as well because you know they get one shot the stages are quite short so yeah good luck to everyone and the quarter final of course Monte Carlo so it's in the ice it starts off on tarmac but then it goes really icy particularly at the end very famous place for rally of course Monte Carlo uh, we've both had a chance to have a go at it as well I'm sure we're not uh, going to be competing with these guys anytime soon but it was we got an idea of how difficult it was going to be yeah, I think especially with the front-wheel drive cars, you know, it's, they're not an easy car to drive in the best of days. You know, they're really challenging. They're just driven by these front wheels. They're not going to have the rear wheels to help at all to rotate those cars. So, you know, 
on ice, you can get a lot of understeer, and they're only going to have the handbrake really to help them get round. So they need some skills out there, but I'm sure that these guys are, are going to nail it. They've done a lot of practice. They've known this track for the last week, so I'm pretty confident they're going to do a good job. Well, as you said, in the qualifiers, the three months of qualifiers we had, there was no tuning, there was no setup. They were all put in the same car, and they had to go out and uh, just compete, basically. It made it a level playing field because not everyone, of course, is as good as tuning the cars. But now, a week of practice, they know what the conditions are going to be. They've had a, a week to tune the cars, set up the cars. How much do you think that's going to help? I think massively, you know, they're, they're all with the R2 car, but they have been able to choose the tyre choice. So, you know, you've got the slick tyre, which is really great for the abrasive tarmac sections. But then also you've got the snow studded tyre, which you're going to need to really dig in and get that grip on the icy sections. You know, there's the argument if it's if it's really abrasive tarmac, you're going to file down those studs ready for the snow sections. But at the same time, with slick tyres on, you haven't got much chance of getting around the corners on the icy sections. So, I mean... Being a, you know, racing in the European Rally Championship, how is it you go about choosing tyre selection and, and also preparing yourself for an event like this? So it's maybe a little bit different to eSports. You're working with your engineer, so you've got that back up and you can look at um, or do a test day as well. So you can try it on that surface. Trial and error really is the way we do it. But much like these guys, they're a little bit more on their own. Um, it's them that they're, they're, they're against the clock. Um, so it's just trial and error for them as well. But we can see the Opel Adam on the start line ready to take on the first stage. Yeah, so Lucas Mateja, Una Pankinen, who was the 2018 winner of the Dirt 4 Championship, John Harris, Maxine Wagner, Sam Thornton, Matthias Adilson, who who is uh, Katie's teammate. Let's get ready to go racing then. This is Group A in the steam category and we are away. So the order, the live order will be to the top right of your screen and you'll be able to see who is where along the stage to the left of your screen. They're all set off at the same time. So this first part of the stage, there is going to be lots of changing of position, but it looks like Yuna Pankinen has got himself into the lead, battling away with Maxim Wagner, the Dutch driver. Yuna Pankinen, the Finnish driver, and he is in the lead at the moment, and that is who we are fo uh, following on screen. So Yuna Pankinen, we can see this, the tarmac section, Katie, of the stage. So this is a chance for them to, someone to try and gain a lead so that they can be a little bit more cautious when we get to the ice. Yeah, I'd say this is probably, from a driver's perspective, this is the easiest section of the stage, you know. This is abrasive tarmac, it's quite predictable. There's some patches of ice, but really, you've got good grip here. They are going to be on studded tyres, so it's a little bit like driving on gravel, you know, you can see the cars sliding around the corners. They're not completely gripping, they are, you know, you can see them coming in sideways there. As we progress into the stage, we're going to get icier conditions, you'll see those studs really starting to work, but really great driving, he's using all of the road here. Um, we're, we're now, I think, we're with Matthias Adilson, so he's in fifth place at the minute, but you can see, really using that racing line. It'll be interesting to see when we get into the icy sections, if they kind of keep it a little bit more straight, you know, because that the racing line isn't always best in Monte Carlo. There's ice patches, there's snow patches. Really, your job is just to avoid those if you can. And you're familiar with these cars. These are the, the class of car that you're actually racing in the European Rally Championship. So tell us a little bit about how, how these cars are going to be handling, particularly when we get to the ice. And what's the trick to getting used to them? They're little pocket rockets, really. You know, they're front-wheel drive rally cars. That means are only driven by the front wheels. So, you know, if they're getting understeer, which I'm sure we're going to see a little bit later, on some of the icy sections, you haven't got the power coming through those rear wheels to help rotate it like you would have it with a rear-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive car. Obviously, later on into the uh, semi-finals tonight, we'll be moving up to the four-wheel drive car, so you'll be able to see that different driving style. But I think that one of the most difficult things about this rally, Monte Rally, rally Monte Carlo, is with the R2, you really use the weight transfer to rotate the car. So it's the late braking into the apex, and it's almost the weight transfer that really brings it round into the slide. Here, it's difficult to do that. It's so icy, you know. If you're leaving the braking to the last minute, it's very easy to just completely understeer and completely overcook the corner. So we can see Matthias has dropped down. Oh, he's back up. Oh, it's so tight. They're moving around all over the place. But fifth place at the minute. You can see it's dark as well, isn't it? So vision is not going to be... Uh, as great as you would have within the day. You can see there are the ice patches and sometimes you don't know exactly when they're going to be arriving. This is a seven minute stage, so it's very long stage, hard to remember. Of course, we've got those big drop-offs as well uh, on the edge in some areas of the stage, which mean mistakes are gonna be very costly uh, around here. Lots of hairpins as well. Really, this stage gives you no time to rest at all. It is mentally very draining. 
Yeah, I was speaking to a rally driver um, who's preparing for this rally, Rally Monte Carlo coming up in January in the World Championship. And he was sort of saying, you know, this rally is not a rally, it's a lottery. Oh! It's, oh, we, that was, oh, I think he saved it, I think he saved it, but up on two wheels there, that happens quite a lot with the R2s. It's, it's so easy just to kind of overcook it. You can see these arm posts sticking out on the exit of corners. It's really important to try and remember if you, where they are if you can, because they can really catch you out. But as you can see, these drivers absolutely drive off the door that handles with this. Well, don't forget the top three are going to be going through to the semi-final. We're about halfway through now, and Yuna Pankinen is fighting for the lead there. So he is doing very well. Lucas Mateja at the moment is in second place, but also running very well is Sam Thornton, the Australian driver. Uh, we also have down in fifth place Maxime Wagner as well. And we are on board with Matthias Adilson, the Swedish driver who is in third place at the moment. So at the moment, we'll be just going through with Yuna Pankinen in second. And we're going to go on board now with first, pl first place, who is Lucas Mateja. So Katie, I'll hand it over to you to talk us a little bit through the stage. Yeah, so as you can see, it's, it, I mean, it's very difficult to see. The last thing they want to happen is to damage their light pods as well, especially in these conditions. That's really important. Setting them up as well is really important, but you can see the rock sticks out on the inside. So it's taking a, quite a central line through this stage. They're not really cutting on the inside because the rock face jolts out, there's arm codes. So I think for Rally Monte Carlo especially, you can see we're starting to go up into the mountain a bit. So we're going up into that snow bank. There's loose snow on the side. But also they've got the standard tyres on, so it's not that much of a problem. That's kind of coming into work now. The tyres will be nice and warm. But at the same time, if they've been practising during the day, there's there's more ice at night. It's obviously colder, so that if there's been any kind of water during the day that's, that's uh, kind of defrosted, it's now frozen again, creating a really slippery layer. So it might be different conditions to what they practised in. You know, if they're expecting day, it might be a little bit more snow and a little bit more slippery than they'd anticipated. Yeah, that is one thing that they weren't told. Now we can see into the final two sections of the stage, ice and snow only, as they now come through the right-hander uh, right into a sharp left. We are on board with Lucas Mateja, who is leading at the moment, but you can see the top right of your screen constantly changing in positions, particularly uh, with Sam Thornton there, uh, as well as the likes of Maxime Wagner. So it's very close. The top three are going to go through. And at the moment, Sam Thornton will be one of those. And we ride on board with him at the moment. Yuna Pankinen will be the other one, as well as Sam Thornton in third place. So very, very close. Lucas Mateja looking very good at the moment. Just missing out in fourth place at the moment is Maxime Wagner. Oh, they're switching around so much. You can see those numbers kind of going up and down on the side. You can see from the splits that we've had in, split number four, so that was a little while ago, but all within a second of each other. It's really tight racing, all splits, one, two, and three, have all been within one or two seconds with each other, so none of the drivers are hanging around out there. It's getting very close, and we're getting towards the end now, so this is it, the final few corners to push as much as you can. If you're sitting in fourth, fifth, or sixth, it's now time to give it everything. If you're in first, second, or third, you cannot make a mistake, otherwise you will be eliminated. This is the first of our quarterfinals on Steam, and the top three are going to go through. Six of them out there. Which three will make it now as we come up to the final few corners? We are watching Sam Thornton, who holds the last qualifying place at the moment. Just ahead is Yuna Pankinen and Lucas Mateja in fourth place. It is Maxime Wagner, who will be desperate now as we come through the final few corners to try and gain a few seconds to get himself into the top three and that step closer to the Autosports show in January. Just the right hander now to go and that is it complete. Yuna Pankinen goes through as well as Sam Thornton and Lucas Mateja as well. In fact, did we have some changes at the end? We'll get confirmation of the results shortly. We got on board with John Harris, who we didn't talk a huge amount about uh, throughout that, but was sitting off the back. And there we can see the results. So it is Lucas Mateja, Yuna Pankinen, and Sam Thornton who go through, but eight tenths behind third place and just missing out Maxime Wagner. A couple of seconds back from that was Matthias Adilson, who was in a qualifying stage earlier in the st uh, earlier on. And then we had uh, John Harris, unfortunately, who missed out. Eight tenths, though. That's very, incredible. very close. Maxine Wagner is going to be hugely disappointed. Yeah, I mean, you know, over 9.83 kilometres, so that's 6.11 miles. I mean, in treacherous conditions like that, you can see on the uphill sections towards the end, it's just about carrying the momentum with those front-wheel drive cars. They're almost throwing it into the corner and just keeping that accelerator pin. They don't want to be braking at all on the uphill sections. Well, to the left, we... 
all those dots were right together throughout. It was hard to know what was going on throughout. So apologies if we didn't get it right every time. But so many changes, particularly at the start. And I'd say that just shows the quality of the field we have right there. That's how close it is. That's why 36,000 now have come down to 36. And unfortunately, uh, three of the drivers already been eliminated. But three have gone through. Uh, and there we can see now we'll move on to PlayStation Group A. We'll have Jose Rodriguez, Anton uh, Brawson, Andre Belchior, uh, Niccolo Adrizone, Adri and then Jan Beg as well. So, well take a breather and into the next one we go what did you make of that our first look at the monte carlo stage what were your thoughts i have to say you know i know these cars so well i'm very familiar with setting them up myself and watching them from the outside and i can see they are completely on the limit of the grip you know they they have got a very specific driving style it's almost like driving that they're on gravel here you know it's slippery they are sliding in they're rotating the car before the apex they you know they're really moving in so they can get on the power as soon as they can what they want to be doing is having their front wheels pointing in the direction they want to go so all they've got to do is accelerate out of the corner you know big slides often cost time we said this yesterday in rallycross sometimes what feels fast is actually slow and sometimes when you see them sliding all over the place it's not the first fastest way to do it so it's all about carrying the momentum with these cars and i guess with the monte carlo stage in the middle of this stage, you have to completely tr change your driving style, I'd imagine, and that's got to be very difficult. Yeah, I mean, tyre choice is a massive problem as well for drivers at Rally Monte Carlo. If you've got a really long tarmac section at the beginning, you know, your studs are going to be really worn down by the time you reach the, the snowy conditions. So it's about managing that as well and not being on the limit of the tyres. So not breaking that late, being very gentle and being smooth with your steering as well will massively help that. So that's why if we have some drivers, I guess, down in fourth and fifth, they might just be saving the tyres for later on in the stage. Yeah, exactly that. And then, you know, some drivers might prefer the snowier conditions and might feel they can push better with their setup that they've chosen. Because we have to remember, these guys are in service area right now. They're choosing their setup to go out with. They've also been told about the weather. So here, you know, it's a little bit little bit cloudy, but it's, it's quite a dry day. So hopefully there should be some good grip. Well, there we can see the cars getting ready to go then. So we go into the next one. This is the PS4. This is Group A. This is the quarterfinals. Five will be narrowed down to three in this one. Everyone looks ready to go, and we are about to get underway then. We ride on board with Andre Belchior, and at the moment, Andre getting a very good start going straight into the lead, but this is a long, long stage. Visibility is going to be a little bit better in this one. They won't have the risk of losing their headlights either, so that's going to be good for them. They may lose him, but it wouldn't matter if they did or not. Uh, but going into an early lead, Nicolo Adrizone, the uh, Italian driver, uh, and it's all changing very quickly behind. But uh, I'd say for some, as, as we said now, the approach is whether you push very hard on those snow tyres at this stage or do you save your tyres for later on. Yeah, I mean, it's almost a little bit more difficult for these guys, you know, it's very dry conditions, so that means it's, it's, these, these studs are going to be wearing down pretty quickly, you know, the tyres are going to be getting hot, they're really going to be digging in to that surface, you know, they're a soft compound, so it doesn't take a lot, a lot of time for them to heat up. Um, so I'm sure that they'll be excited for when the, the, the grip changes and it goes that little bit more consistent towards the end of the stage with the snow. If you look to the bottom left of your screen, you can see the dots which tell us where the drivers are. That is just one dot. They're basically all together at the moment as we go into the second part of the stage. We start to work our way uphill. Big elevation change uh, in the Monte Carlo uh, rally. Prada Delart is the stage that we are on. 1,500 feet of elevation change, 6.1 miles as well. So very demanding stage. Let's go on board then for a little bit while we're in the tarmac, Katie. Yep, so we're on board with P1 at the minute. You can see that the positions are really swapping around below, but he seems to be pretty consistent at the front, setting the pace nicely for everyone. He's really using all of the road, and you can tell he really knows the stage well. He could just see on that inside of that hairpin, he could clip that corner, cut it a little bit onto the grass, but then he knows exactly where that rock sticks out. Just like we saw on that left-hand corner, he's not completely on the left-hand side, because if you touch that, it could send you into a spin, and that will be detrimental to your time. It is almost you've got to know two corners ahead in rally isn't it where you're where you're going you've just got to trust those notes and know that if you're coming round a blind left and it's a, a left four or whatever you've got to know that however much speed you're going to carry if you know it's right then you're going to be just fine and what's so cool actually about this version is that the pace notes they're getting are so advanced you know you've got the top co-drivers writing them 
these guys are trusting them completely. I mean, I'm sure by now they probably know the stages as well off by heart because they've been practicing them all week. But at the same time, they've got the backup. That co-driver is always a couple of corners ahead with the pace notes and also telling them about the conditions. You know, it might be a left, but it might have extra snow or extra ice. And that's something that you get at Monte Carlo. You know, your weather crew will go through and they'll be able to tell you the changes in conditions up ahead. In a long stage like this, Katie, how hard is it to, to keep yourself composed and calm and know just how much you're pushing is enough. You don't have to go over the limit and take yourself out of contention. How hard is it to keep yourself calm and know what I'm doing now is just fine? Do you know, I think Rally Monte Carlo is completely separate to every other rally in the calendar. There is no rally that's as unpredictable in the conditions. You know, it's difficult to test for it. The week before, it might be really snowy and then that might have melted, the sudden change in temperature, and you've got very different conditions for the actual event. So it's one of those things you just have to go with it. Experience pays dividends here. Kilometers in your car, really trusting your co-driver and a weather crew. Really, really important is knowing the area. You know, if you can get some local guys in the area as your weather crew, that helps massively because they're able to give you the advice. They, you know, they think it will be light at this time, which means the sun's going to be on this side of the mountain. But actually, when you go around to the other side of the mountain, there's going to be some more ice. The little bit more in the shadow you can see here, it's a little bit more slippery. There's some more ice patches around the hairpin there up the inside, now with fourth place. The position seems to be settling out a little bit now. The, the dots are all still so close, there's one dot, but actually, when you're looking at the times on the right, on the, on the, on the position board, it is, it is stabling out a little bit. Well, I can tell you, being delivered, delivered the first four splits, that uh, uh, first place, of course, uh, Nicardi, Niccolo Adrizzoni was quickest, but there was only about a second between uh, first to last. In fact, make that seven tenths. Uh, through the second split, once again, of course, uh, Adrizzone was quickest, but uh, the slowest was less than a second slower. Uh, again, less than a second into, uh, from first to last in the third split, and likewise in the fourth split as well. It is extremely close. You'll see that to the left of your screen, the dots to indicate where each of the drivers are. We'll do a full run through uh, of the order. Nicolo Adrizzone leading the way at the moment. Andre Belcher, the Portuguese driver, is in second, but very close to time uh, is Antron, uh, Bros Anton Brawson. They're changing places all the time. And coming into play now is Jose Rodriguez as well, the Costa Rican driver. Uh, and then we have Jan Beg uh, at the back of the field. But uh, second, third and fourth all changing. Two of those three drivers is going to go through. One of them will unfortunately miss out. Who's it going to be? It is very close to call. Exactly, just cu a couple more splits to go. We're really coming into the last three quarters of this race now. But it does seem that Nicolo Adazzoni is really up ahead. You know, he's got that extra little bit that it takes on the surface. Maybe it suits him a little bit more. He's just re oh, really sideways into that. You can see on the snow now, this consistent grip. They're able to push a little bit more because it, they know exactly what's going to be around the corner. You know, I don't think we're going to see any tarmac now towards the end of the stage. It's snow and it's ice and that's consistent, which is what you want in rally. Well, Anton Brawson, we're, well, we're back with Adrizzone, but uh, Anton Brawson will go to him in just a second because he has just gone into to third place and you could see changing from Adrezone and Brawson they were, look like they're pretty much at exactly the same corner and Brawson loves the snow maybe he was saving his tyres because he is starting to move up the order now he's gone into second so was that what we were talking about I wonder has he saved his tyres at the start and now he's starting to come into play in the second half yeah exactly rally is a marathon you know it's not a sprint and that's one of the things that's carrying the momentum you can see it's a gradual uphill incline these cars haven't got the power that the four wheel drive cars have got but they need to keep the power pinned and you can see he's using that weight transfer from right to left really nicely we call it a Scandinavian flicking rally it's that weight transfer turning in one way and then the momentum propels you back the other way when you stitch the sw switch the steering lock well the Swedish driver Brawson will know all about that I'm sure as he is making his way now through the long right hand a second place at the moment third at Belchior uh, the Portuguese driver sitting in fourth place desperate to get through the top three go through to the semi-finals the following two will unfortunately be eliminated from the competition as we make our way now to the final two corners. It looks like Adrizone is going to take the first place in the semi-final. Second place at the moment is Rodriguez. Rodriguez now taking the lead, the Costa Rican driver. Belchor's coming into play as well. It is very close. We've only got one more corner to go through the right-hander. Adrizone is going to go through. It looks like second place 
well the Costa Rican driver dropping <gasps> down the order second place just about there and then we had Belchor just about stealing third from Brawson unfortunately and Beg at the back of the field but that is 1.7 seconds between first and fourth place and four tenths of a second between third and fourth Brawson's going to be absolutely gutted with that was in second at one stage for a split second was even in the lead but four tenths it is how he loses out and unfortunately he is out that is going to be bitterly disappointing that was absolutely incredible I think you know to see that happening through all those changing conditions. You know, there's cars parked at the side of the road. There's Armco <laughs> sticking out. There's rock faces. There's lumps of snow. There's ice. And these drivers are all feeling that, you know, through their controllers. If they're just driving with the steering wheels, if they're on the keyboards or controllers, whatever they're driving on, because it's an open entry here, so you can, you can qualify in whatever you want. But the finals is going to be with that, with that steering wheel on the seat in Birmingham. But it's absolutely incredible that they're all adapting that quickly to those conditions to be on the pace with each other. I mean, we saw three hundredths of a second separating first and second there very very close indeed don't forget these are the best in the world in the dirt rally 2.0 world series 36,000 drivers have been uh, whittled down to 36 and they are now competing in the quarter and semi-finals this evening as you join us live to go into the finals which will be at the autosport show in january we already have our six finalists in rally cross which we decided yesterday six finalists now for rally We've still got to go back to Monte Carlo, though. We've got, of course, Xbox Group A, which is going out next. And then we go once again through all three platforms in the Group B. So here are your Group A drivers in Xbox N. We've got uh, Dave Marshall, who qualified through from Rallycross yesterday uh, as well. We've got Paul Beggin, the French driver. Carlos Lopez, the Mexican. Uh, then we've got Nico Valkanen, Dean Wilson, and Vincent Leblair as well. T Dean Wilson's going to be desperate to qualify through. I'm, I'm, I know they all will, but Dean Wilson was in a great position in the semi-finals in Rallycross yesterday, was the first of the drivers to have taken the joker lap, sitting in third, and then had a crash right at the end of the race. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. You know, that's the nature of motorsport and of Rallycross. We saw some really bitter endings yesterday, but I have to say, you know, it's really cool that these drivers are able to qualify again for the rally today, get that extra chance to get to Birmingham. In a weird way, wouldn't you say that the advantage here is with Dave Marshall, because he's qualified through for Rallycross already, so there's absolutely no pressure on him, really. I mean, of course, he'll be desperate to go through and rally as well. It'd be cool to have him in both for, for his sake, I'm sure. But the pressure's off now, and that might make him drive that little bit better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a huge thing for a driver. If you know that you've already got your seat, as it were, for the next year, then it's, you know, it's a nice feeling. You can, you can enjoy it a bit more. But it'll be cool to see his transfer of skills here. They're in the service park. They're getting ready now. Yeah, well, you can see uh, Dean Wilson's gone for the Peugeot and everyone else for the... Uh, Opel, so the the Peugeot being represented here, that must be good to see for yourself. I'll be a little bit biased with that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll see how he gets on. They are in the, or well, they're at the start now of the stage, getting ready to go. This is Xbox Group A. Six drivers already through to the semis. At the end of this, we will have nine drivers through. This is the quarterfinals, Xbox Group A, and we're about to get going. Red lights come on, and they're off. So away we go then. And it is different conditions, of course, once again. Very foggy conditions here for the Xbox Group A drivers. And an immediate mistake there. Uh, that was uh, uh, Paul Beggin making a, a mistake straight away. So now has a little bit of time to make up. But uh, uh, as we're expecting, lots of changing of positions in these early stages. Yeah, I think he was using the tactics. I mean, you can see there he's really using every inch of the road here. Maybe he's, you know, a very confident tarmac driver and he's really trying to make the most of his skills here on this first section as we climb up into the mountains before we get to that snowy and icy section. But it's absolutely incredible. You know, I was, I was watching the results come in for the preparation rally for Monte Carlo that's happening this morning. A driver, you know, one of the top drivers in contention for Rally Monte Carlo in the R5 four-wheel drive category this morning, you know, went off on the first corner. Oh, and we see him sideways through that corner again. You know, these drivers, they're used to being on the limit. And for this rally, sometimes that's not the best approach. As we saw this morning with that rally, you know, he was off in the first corner. His hopes for a victory are over. Yeah, that's it. It's so close as we've seen. Four tenths has been the difference between third and fourth. So it has been extremely close uh, in the groups that we've seen already, Steam Group A, especially PlayStation Group A, was uh, particularly close. So that one mistake, they all know in their head that that could cost them 
uh, a place in the semi-finals and that could force them to, to start chasing themselves which will uh, make, make it even worse. Long stage ahead though, we're probably just in the first quarter here. So these drivers are still on this tarmac section. You can see actually, you can notice that little black ice and that's what Rally Monte Carlo is actually really famous for. That thin layer is absolutely lethal for these drivers. You can see they're, they're kind of avoiding it. You don't want to be breaking on it. That kind of tarmac as well, when it's wet, is really, oh, and into the side there, he is absolutely on the limits. He's holding his third position though, but as you can see, there is only really the, the number one, Nico Valkonen, pulling away from the pack there with those dots on the side. The others are quite bunched up and they're switching, switching positions all the time there on the right. Yeah, yeah, Nico Valkonen in a very comfortable position at the moment, but it only takes one mistake and then he'd be straight into the clutches of the rest of the field. Dean Wilson is in second place, desperate, of course, after that uh, mistake yesterday in the semi-finals in Rallycross, which cost him a place uh, in to the final. He is in second at the moment, and then Paul Beggin in third place. Well, Nico Valkman doing very well at the moment, so let's go on board with him for a minute. As you can see, it's getting a little bit slower, uh, snowier now. Icy, he's taking that cut on the inside. Oh, he's taking the risk, you know. He would have known. He knows these stages so well. He would have known there's not an arc arm code. There's not rock in the middle there. He can afford, if he did it, he would have been able to carry a little bit more momentum around that corner. I think, oh, that ice, you can see just how quickly it flips these cars. Front wheel drive, if you keep the power in, you've got to be brave, but that's probably the best way to do it. You know, if you feel a slide coming, keeping the power in, those front wheel drive cars, the front wheels will pull you out of that slide. Even just watching these guys is terrifying, I have to say. I would not sit in the passenger seat uh, of one of these rally cars around Monte Carlo. Into the left hand hairpin we go. Nico Valkonen is making one or two mistakes here. It looks like that one mistake has uh, led to a couple more. I don't know if he's getting a little bit frustrated with himself. But I think you can notice it's a little bit twitchy, actually, through, through these corners. You know, there were some short corners there, and you could see the car a little bit unsettled. Maybe it's because we're going onto some snow, some ice. It's not predictable there, but half a spin, and ah, oh, look how quickly that came out on the handbrake. You just tweak that handbrake. If you catch it on the wrong surface, with a bit of black ice there, then it's really easy to flip it round. And I have to say, in these dusk conditions now, getting a little bit dark is even more difficult to see that black surface on the top there they call it black top in france it's a very specific kind of i've done it, i've got a lot of experience on that black top surface and when it's wet or got ice on top of it it really does flip the car and then you become a passenger well that's uh, what they have to deal with this is the world series we have to give them the hardest challenges possible <laughs> now nico valkenham was three seconds quicker than anyone in the first split alone which is around a 50 second. And then he was four seconds quicker than anyone through the second split. That gap was reduced to one second in split three. Uh, and then he was actually still the quickest uh, through the fourth split as well. But a big mistake there. And has he picked up damage now, I wonder? Because Nico Valkonen is not looking so comfortable anymore. It looks like his car was pulling right a little bit, but uh, uh, some damage there. Nico Valkonen just needs to calm it down a little bit now. But uh, behind there is lots of changes, particularly in third and fourth. So perhaps we'll have a look at those guys now because uh, we have Carlos Lopez, the Mexican driver, who is going from third to fourth to fifth as quickly as that. <laughs> and at the moment, uh, he, he was in last place, I think, for a second there. Uh, but Carlos Lopez, uh, one of the drivers, of course, try on the limit of uh, maybe going through. Looks like Dean Wilson is just ahead. In fact, Dean Wilson even dropping from second to sixth in a flash there. So this is very hard to call from second to sixth. It could be any one of them who goes through. Yeah, I think we've literally just seen that change in surface there. So it's onto that icy, it's onto the snow. They'll know that like the back of their hands. We might see some of them pulling away from the pack now. Those that are comfortable in these kind of like Scandinavian conditions and the heavy snow. But look at that sheet ice. I mean, driving on that is brutal. It's, you know, and you can see no grip there, losing that momentum around that hairpin. But he's keeping it tidy, you know, he's not overcooking it. It's a very ma mature drive there, but that, I'm starting to wonder if he's even taking road tires there by the, by the lack of grip that he had. But looking for that snow on the inside rather than the sheet ice on the right, that's where the grip is, but kind of slowing down the pace a lot there. It looks like this is a really icy run of this track today. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if he's got damage or not, because it was a pretty hard hit he had. But second is Dean Wilson. Uh, then we have Carlos Lopez in third place. Uh, fourth place at the moment is Paul Beggin. And then behind that it is Vincent Lablaire, who is in fifth. 
So that is your order at the moment. Uh, so we go back on board with Lopez, the Mexican driver. We're into the final section of this stage now. At the moment, he holds the last place into the semi-finals. And up ahead, Dean Wilson's taken the lead. So Nico Valkanen is really struggling now. Valkanen could be in danger of dropping out here. Yeah, we saw a minute ago when we were with him on the camera, he looked like he just w didn't have the confidence on this ice. He was sliding. He didn't look like he could find the grip in the tyres. Uh, just kind of over-rotating the car. If he can, yeah, here we are, we're back with him now. So he's looking for that grip on the inside. There's a little bit of snow, but he drops down to third place. Oh no, this is dangerous. Paul Beggin, the French driver, is in fourth place at the moment. Valkanen, the Finnish driver, could be dropping out of the quarterfinals despite leading by three, four seconds through the first split alone. This is absolutely devastating stuff for Valkanen. He's got one more corner to hold on and he's out. He's dropped to fourth place. Dean Wilson's going to take the win. And it looks like Paul Beggin has stolen third place. And the last four into the semi final right at the end we'll wait till the results come through the results about to come up and there we can see no. he has Dean Wilson takes a comfortable win Carlos Lopez in second then it was put it was Paul Beggin in third and just under one second behind was Nico Valkanen he is going to be devastated with that fifth place is Vincent LeBlair and then Dean Wilson is in a uh, sixth place it's Dave Marshall of course my apologies who goes through to take the win so Dave Marshall taking a comfortable win but uh that was absolutely devastating there for Nico Valkanen. Yeah, I mean, a Finn, you know, that was his territory at the end. You know, the, the snow, it's probably what he drives to work, to school on, all through the winter out there. That's such a shame. I bet he's going to be absolutely gutted by that. But it just shows, you know, when it was that little bit more icy on that run, it was really down to the drivers that kept it tidy and that carried the momentum on the uphill hairpins. You know, we saw him almost come to a stop sometimes. He just wasn't able to carry the same momentum that some of the other guys found through the grip. But Dave Marshall, I think he kind of took it, paced himself and then pushed a little bit harder, a little bit harder. No mistakes at all that I saw. And uh, Dave Marshall is going through in a comfortable win. Uh, Paul Beggin just about stealing that third place there at the end from Nico Valkanen. It looked like damage to me because he just didn't look like he was carrying as much speed as anyone else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was a really notable change after he kind of hit that arm co. We saw some of the arm go fly yeah. off. Um, yeah, so it would be cool, cool to hear from him, to hear, you know, what he, what his feelings were after that. If he felt like he didn't look like a puncher, but I mean, as you say, there could have been some damage. Well, unfortunate there, but that is rally for you. One mistake and you could be out even if you are uh, in a uh, significant lead. Right, into the Group Bs now. We're flying through these. This is Steam Group B, uh, Alexandru Botost, and we've got Ray Cobbing, uh, and then we've got Luca Giacomin as well, Jonathan Schaefer, Jarod Pest, and Pedro Silva. Those are the six drivers. Three places up for grabs once again. You know the score by now. If you're just joining us, we've had the Group A categories go out, uh, and now we go into the Group B. B categories, three drivers going through in each of the quarterfinals, uh, and then we will have the semi finals in our show later on. There we go. Dark conditions in this one, so we're back to darker conditions. What difference do you think that's going to make compared to what we just saw there in the lighter conditions? I mean, obviously, it all comes down to confidence. You know, it's the mind game of trying to trick yourself into thinking, actually, it's no different in the dark to the to the daytime. It will probably be a bit more icy, though. I expect the, the road temperature to be that little bit lower as well, which means it's going to take longer for the tyres to heat up. Um, also, you're not going to be able to see as much. It sounds obvious, but you don't want to be damaging those light pods. But what I find really interesting is these guys have obviously played a lot, around a lot with their, their choice of tyres, but also the car. They're all choosing the Opel Adam R2. And we've kind of, you know, in the European Championship, we've done some work into this and we've looked into it. And this car is actually faster on uphill sections. So they've really thought right. about this for the later half of the stage. And as we mentioned earlier, the elevation change is massive. It's at 1,500 feet of elevation change. Right, you'll see the lights just to the top right of the car there. They'll come on once all those five lights are on. They will fade away and then we'll be away. There you can see three lights, four lights, five lights. Get ready to let that handbrake go. And away we go. Green lights come on so here we go then Botos Cobbin, Giacomin, Schaefer, Pesh and Silva those are the six drivers in Steam Group B three will go through to the later semi-final so there we can see a good look at the conditions taking place at dusk so headlights are on damaging those could be a significant loss of time in terms of not being able to see where you're going but at the moment all is looking good for Alexandre Botos who we are following at the moment 
Yeah, I mean, you can see how, how easy it is for him to rotate this car. It's a, short, it's a shorter car than the Peugeot or the Ford. So that's, I think that's probably why they've chosen this car. Not mentioning, you know, the speed that it can carry in the uphill sections as well. But incredible to see. And looking, looking down these results here, we've got two Australian drivers in this race. So that's kind of racing in the middle of the night for them. It's great dedication from the crews out today. Yeah, we did have a Costa Rican driver out earlier as well. We've got a Japanese driver, Mexican drivers as well. Japanese driver in our next group. Further Australian as well in our last group, which will be Xbox Group E. But this is Steam Group B showing how international this competition is and there we can see through the hairpin back up the hill uh, we go we are on board uh, with Ray Cobbing at the moment who is just flipping from first to second like that and then we have Pedro Silva as well who is uh, also having his share in the lead at the moment Alexandra Bottas holds, holds that third and one see flirting with disaster out of that hairpin there there was a wall that was uh, arriving very quickly as well as some spectators as well but just got out of the way you can see uh, in first place now Pedro Silva I actually recognize his name he is a rally driver as well wow. um, in real competition I think he kind of stopped competing in 2016 but maybe he's turned to esports now uh, so that's cool WERT as well same team as Matthias Nielsen so they've maybe got the real rally driver life going into the esports rally driver life and we can see that combination coming in nicely there oh that was a big mistake there that was from third to sixth that mistake uh, cost Ray Cobbing there so uh, the British driver dropping down to the back of the field now back up to fifth fourth it's uh, not really a good idea to try and keep an eye on the positions at this stage you can see them to the top right of your screen sixth place won't be uh, visible for you but to the left you'll see the dots and the names next to them the reason the names are all merged together is because that's how close they are on track at the moment but we start to make our way uphill now we're following Alexander Bottas at the moment I have to say some of these guys park their cars in a very close place and I would definitely not park my car there I've uh, definitely the rally is icy. I've experienced some of that and I've also parked my rally car in places I wouldn't want to park my rally car I can say right. that as well what's been throughout this season the, the highlight of your season Oh, highlight of my season. Do you know what? It was a near miss in the Azores, volcanic stage. I was at the top of the volcano. Stage. I was at the top of the volcano driving around the crater and, uh, yeah, nearly nearly fell into the middle. Wow. <laughs> we wow. had a huge spin up on two wheels. Our onboard camera was something special from that event. Right a wheel before you go into that stage. Unbelievable. But there we go. What about Monte Carlo? Are you going to be heading over there? Next yeah, year? I'll be out there. I'd love to do the recce for this event. I think, as I was saying, you know, pace notes are key. And it's so important to be able to know the area well. So I think before competing, it's a really good idea to go on the recce. The recce is a two-day event where you write your pace notes. Obviously, the drivers in this game are relying on the very trusted pace notes written, I think, by John Armstrong um, in this game, so ex-rally driver himself. Um, but yeah, we're coming into the fourth section now, so as you can see, we're about halfway through the race, which should mean that we can get some splits any time now. Yeah, we'll get those for you in just a second. Um, we have those available now. So quickest through the first split was Pedro Silva. Quickest through uh, the second split was Pedro Silva as well. Uh, through the third split, uh, it was uh, Jonathan Schaefer. And through the fourth split, the quickest driver uh, was Luca Giacomin, so one of the Australian drivers. So that's how close it is. The three drivers going through at the moment will be Pedro Silva, uh, Jonathan Schaefer and Luca Giacomin. Their gamer tags making it very easy to remember their names. But behind that, it is all changing at the moment. This one, it is not over until it's over. We found that out uh, in the last stage, how quickly it can change uh, with our Xbox Group A drivers. It can change at the very final corner. That's the level of competition we have in the Dirt Rally 2.0 World Series. Yeah, I and mean, these drivers, they're going to be have to, to adapt from the, the, oh, I can hear, we've, we've had a spin from Alexander Bottas, so he's dropping off now. We should see his dot update in a minute. Maybe he's lost a bit of time, or he might have been able to recover it. Yeah, well, he's going to be in sixth place, so he's off the, uh, the, off the positions at the moment. You can see the top five and how quickly it's changing. Pedro Silva up to first again. Jonathan Schaefer briefly down to third, then back up to second as quick as a flash. Uh, now in fourth place, trying to get up is Jawa Pesh at the moment. That is the first loser, if you like, in this competition uh, in terms of uh, this stage. But uh, lots of changes going on. Luca Giacomo now down to third place. And this is where it starts to get very, very tricky, Katie. As we can see, Luca Giacomo now sliding all over the place. 
Yeah, I mean, you can just see the level of his, his speed decreasing as these conditions get very icy. He's quite a sideways style we've got there. That will probably suit him a little bit better when he's in the four-wheel drive and he's got the power to kind of drag him out of that slide later. But setting the car up nicely there for that hairpin, hugging the inside and then finding that snow on the left, on the entry to that right-hand corner around there. But the exit, you can see, is absolute sheet ice. Well, the top three are just changing all the time with every single corner. Jarod Pesh in fourth place hasn't made an impact in the top three uh, in the last couple of sections, I'd say, but that's not writing off just yet. And don't forget about uh, fifth place as well, which is Ray Cobby, uh, who was doing very well earlier on until we actually saw him glance uh, the mountain face. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, Botos, who has spun down in sixth place. So uh, unlikely we'll see him impact the top three. Coming into the last section now, and you can see the top three positions have switched again. Pedro Silva's mouth moved down to third place. Yeah, well, Jarrod Pesci was fourth, now climbing up to first place. Luca Giacomin is in second. Pedro Silva is third. It's changing all the time. It's going to be decided <laughs> at the line, this one. It's a very quick right-hander that leads us up to the line. Right, here we go. Two more corners to go, I think it is now, through the left, and then we'll come up to the right. Luca Giacomin down to fourth, back to third again. Pedro Silva is now down to fourth place. Gerard Pesh somehow has got himself into the lead from fourth place. Giacomin is second. Jonathan Schaefer third. Pedro Silva fourth. We come up to the line. Did it change? I think it did. Let's wait. Yes, well, jo jo Jonathan Schaefer finishes third. Pedro Silva is fourth place. Luca Giacomin second. Gerard Pesh finishes in first place. So two Australians through to the semi-finals. The organisers get very nervous. Flight's looking expensive at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Pesch goes through. Uh, now, we did have a, a, a an update to the result there, but uh, we'll confirm that again uh, in just a second. Gerald Pesch, uh, that wasn't the results as they came up to the line. So uh, we'll confirm that in just a second. I believe it was Gerald Pesch, Luca Giacomin, and Jonathan Schaefer were the three that went through. As you can see, next to Luca Giacomin, there's a disconnect, so it's updated his result. Mechanical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's oh, most for you. Yeah, I've yeah. had my fair I, share I of them as well. Was, there was two Australians going through. Flights to Birmingham for two Australians is looking very expensive. I wonder if... Uh, it's a little political. There was oh, a little no. bit of, <laughs> little bit of no. a political... Yeah, an inside job, Not maybe. at all. It was <laughs> so close on the line there. Literally hundreds of a second. But I find it so amazing. The pack can be quite stable running up into that last little section. And it must just be a complete shock, you know, the conditions. And it's how quickly the drivers can adapt to that. Because it is almost like a complete flip around of the scoreboard. I think it's maybe a mental thing. Do you reckon it's... Drivers know that they're perhaps going through and then they just take it too easy and others yeah. just go, I'm going to give it absolutely everything, nail the last uh, section of the stage and then they somehow jump up into the lead. I, I, I don't know if it's a mental thing or, or if it's tyres that are, are changing. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I guess it's that their mentality. You know, the guys that are running fourth, fifth, sixth, they've got nothing to lose. So it's yeah. all or nothing. The guys at the front, you know, they're playing with that, don't want to make a mistake, but yeah. also need to stay on the pace. But as you as you know, they, they don't see where the other drivers are. So they maybe could push that a little bit more, but they don't know that they're fighting with a driver for hundreds of a second and that's the, that's the nature of rally isn't it how would you find it if when you were out there you had live positions changing all the time i, I know you have a, a time that you got to aim for but that must be so distracting not to just keep your eye on that if i if it were me i'd put tape over that so yeah. i don't look at it but well sometimes you can you know the co-driver will have a phone that's connected to their team and right. they will receive live split information all through on whatsapp and he'll be able to say you know you're two seconds down or you're five seconds up so they do have that sometimes in the car but i think with certain drivers and certain personalities that red mist really comes down and as soon as you know someone's ahead of you you might stick off on the next corner trying to make it all up in that one corner well, there we go. That was a, a fantastic stage. Steam is now done. Group A and B, we have our six drivers who are through. They will compete against each other over two stages in the semi-final until we get our final two drivers out of that. Right, PlayStation Group B time. Three have already gone through in Group A. It's time to get three through from Group B. Uh, Robin Johnson, Ryohei Iwami, the Japanese driver there. Alexandra Huss is out as well, as is Quinten Delomo, who wants to join his brother, uh, who qualified through in Rallycross yesterday. And then we have Crispin Handel as well. So Alexandra Huss, of course, is qualified through via Rallycross. So there's not too much pressure on him. Uh, but uh, Quinten, 
well, desperate to join his brother on a trip to Birmingham, surely. Yeah, I mean, it would really, you know, that would make the family Christmas, I think. Yeah. That would be a nice <laughs> present from Santa this year. Um, yeah, from France, you know, they're obviously massively into the game. I can imagine it's a very competitive household as well. I think yes. maybe, you know, his brother might have been helping him do a little bit extra practice yes. so they can make sure they can get through together. Um, that's what I like to think anyway. But we can see we've actually got a Fiesta on the line, which is kind of a bit unusual. We've had the Opals, we've had one old Peugeot, but yeah, here we are with the Fiesta. Right, there you go. Any advance, clear advantages you see between the two, or is it too... Well, I mean, it's the only one that's kind of run with a turbo, but, you know, historically, it hasn't got as much horsepower as the other cars. But then having seen that, with those treacherous icy conditions, actually, do you need that horsepower is a little bit more about survival. Well, we'll definitely have to jump on board with the Fiesta when we get to those uh, final couple of sections. But away we go. Horsepower not helping off the line, though. Slotted into uh, fifth place there is Nawami. It's the uh, Japanese driver uh, who is in that Fiesta. Everyone else are on the Opals that we uh, can see. Crispin Handel is in fourth place at the moment. And we have Chris with the shooter game attack in third. Uh, Quinto, that's Quinton uh, Delamo, is second place. And Zombie Slayer is Robin Johnson, uh, the Swedish driver, who I'm sure will be pleased to see the icy condition. So this the point where we settle into the stage. We tend to have everyone very close together. We've had everyone very close together all the way through, but particularly through the tarmac, I'm sure everyone will be very confident, especially in these conditions at this stage. Yeah, I have to say, I think it's going to be really interesting to see this now because this is, you know, we've got dry day conditions, so we're probably around midday here. You'd think it would be, the tarmac will be the hottest, the air temperature will be the hottest. Um, so it should be a little less te treacherous up when you get up onto the final section, you know, where we've seen those, that complete turnaround of drivers again on the scoreboards where it gets that, that, that icy section at night time, that dusk section where it's a little bit more difficult to see. It might be a little bit more consistent on this race. They might be able to push a little bit faster. On board with the Japanese driver, which is Awami. It's probably worth us actually going up to uh, Quinton Delomo because uh, Quinton is uh, moving, is swapping between first and second. Zombie Slayer uh, is also having his share at the lead as well, as is Shooter as well. Alejandro Puss, who is of course qualified through as one of the six finest in Rallycross, did that yesterday. This is the quarter final stage, so this course is just to get them into the semi final. The top three are going to go through if you have just joined us. That is the situation we're in at the moment. Quarter finals, top three go through, which will give us six drivers across each platform. They'll then all compete against each other over two stages in the semi finals, which will give us uh, the top two then in each, on each platform to make six finalists. So uh, we go back to the Japanese driver Iwami. Is this car going to work in his favour when it gets to the ice? Or should this be where we see Iwami? trying to make the most of that extra horsepower. Yeah, I think it's quite cool just to notice here on the, the top three as well that the top, the top three are the guys that were competing in the Rallycross Championship yesterday. So yes. maybe that extra bit of training, extra bit of competition has settled the nerves a bit so they're able to put, put their cars to the test on this rally stage today. But going into the snowy section, I think it's quite cool to note, you know, you can see these hairpins, you can see you're climbing a mountain. And during the rally, the engineers will actually be calculating the amount of left-hand corners compared to the amount of right-hand corners. And they will cross the tires. So, for example, here you can see you've got tarmac and you've got ice and snow. Some of the engineers will work out whether it's best to have a snow tire on the right front, but a right. tarmac tire on the front left. And they'll work it out based on the amount of corners going left compared to the amount of corners going right. So they've got the ultimate grip for that car. Wow. It's uh, oh, so very technical, isn't it? And that's why you have those two days to uh, get all your notes ready and get all your uh, tuning done as well. They've had a week, these guys, to uh, tune and set up their cars, knowing what stages they're going to be on. I imagine it's quite tempting to put way more practice into the quarterfinal, uh, the Monte Carlo stage, and almost forget about the semi-final stages. Or do you do less practice in the quarters and get yourself ready for the semis, knowing that only two go through? It must be very hard to know how much practice to do on each stage. You can split it evenly across three, but uh, uh, it must be tempting to just do way more practice in the yeah, so I can see we've got some split times through. On that last split, so split number four that we passed about halfway through that stage, there is literally three tenths separating wow. all places. So you could see the top, you know, the five drivers that we've got here, they're all on the pace, there's no doubt about that. 
Before that, we had, uh, who was fastest there? So we had, actually down, we had Shooter was fastest on split number three. Um, so he is taking the lead actually now, so maybe yeah. he's picking up the pace, you know, these icy conditions might be suiting him now. It'd be interesting to see what it's like when we transfer onto that really snowy surface as well for him. Well, let's wait and see. It's very close. It's one, perhaps one of the closest we've had. You can see on the left, all the dots have merged into one because that's how close uh, we are. Shooter it is who is leading uh, at the moment. That is Alexandra Hus who qualified through from Rallycross yesterday. And we have Crispin Handel, the Polish driver, in second. Make that fourth, make that third, make that second, make that fifth, make that first. It's swapping all the time. Two more sections of this stage to go. Shooter shooting off into the lead to get that in somewhere. <laughs> Crispin Handel uh, is now in fourth place. Uh, Quinton Delomo trying to join his brother at the moment in second place. Oh, and it's swapping all the time. We actually saw on the last split that we've had through Crispin Handel took the lead on on the on that split only by a tenth of a second. But every tenth of a second is going to count in this as we've seen in the last one. It, what was it? Three tenths or three hundredths that separated first and second on the last race? It was something like third and fourth has been I think less than half a second every single time so far. So it's devastatingly close. And uh, to miss out like that much after all three months of preparation and practice uh, must be a hard one to take. But uh, here we go, Quinton Delomo now fourth, now third. His brother's going to be cheering him on, I'm sure. Zombie Slayer out in the lead at the moment, Shooter in second. But who is going to go through in third? Let's not forget about our driver in fourth place as well, which is Iwami, the Japanese driver. He'll be trying to climb up the order as we now come into the last section. Yeah, and you could see who was sticking with here, Quinto. That was a really nice line through there. He was It was a very slippery, icy section on the outside. He almost hugged the apex of that quarter. Not your typical racing line, but that's what we were talking about earlier. You are constantly searching for the grip, and he's looking for that white snow. So he's hugging the inside, then he's looking for the snow on the right on the inside into that corner. But he's also carrying a lot of momentum, so I reckon he could be fast on this next split coming up to the finish. Well, Zombie Slayer, we go back with him now, leading at the moment. But let's not forget what happened to Valkan earlier on who dropped from first to fourth through the last section alone shooter is second Quinton Delamo trying to join his brother through to the finals is in third place then we have Crispin Handel in fourth place are we going to see any changes at the line we have less than a handful of corners to go now three two corners remaining zombie slayer leading at the moment they now start to come uphill into the left then it will be the final right hander that leads us up to the line zombie slayer shooter and Quinto the top three at the moment, can Crispin Handel steal a place to the semi-final right at the death here? Round the final corner they come. Certainly Zombie Slayer is going to go through and does so. There we see Shooter <laughs> second, uh, Quinton Delamo third. So just about sneaks through. Three tenths ahead of Crispin Handel in fourth place. And then we had Iwami there at the back of the field. But, uh, well, second to fourth, there was only half a second. That's how close it was. Yeah, we that was a, that was a close heat there. I can see I'm looking back at the Group A and actually this was two seconds faster than Group A's fastest time today. So, you know, that pace, they were really on it there. They were all pushing on. Strong field though, you know, we've got a finalist for, for the rally cross. We have, the, you know, the guy that just missed out to his brother in the final. We have another competitor in the in the rally cross that didn't qualify. So, you know, that was a really tight field. Um, yeah, as we say, these groups are random, but that was that was a tough one to be put in. Yeah, very, very tough. As you said, you're completely right. 12 drivers, two groups of six drawn at random, but one more to go. It's flown by, isn't it? Xbox it has. B, and then we're going to take a break and then we'll come back for the semifinals a little bit later on. So Xbox Group B, they've been sitting there patiently waiting for a while now. Do you reckon they would have tried to watch and pick up some pointers anywhere or is it just trying to get themselves in the zone? How is it you, you prepare when you're leading into the final 10, 20 minutes before a stage? I think it's difficult because actually it's quite nice to watch and to see the changing conditions of these drivers. You know, if, if they can compare to the group before them, they'll see where it's slippier, where those drivers are losing it a little bit. But we have heard one of them... Um, can't, yeah, it's got, we've got a connection problem. So Ibram Santana is not going to be in this race. That means it's actually only going to be, is that five drivers left now in that race? So a higher chance of getting through to the semi-finals, lucky for some. Yeah, well, at least, but uh, still very, very difficult. So we've got Casper uh, uh, Mikkel, Zuk, Alexandra Brun, uh, Matty Ahola, uh, Matthew Zerbato, the Australian, looking to make it three Australians in the semi-final. Uh, Robin Siren, the French driver, is going to be out there as well. And there you can see, 
uh, names, gamer tags, Xbox Group B it is. As we said, though, no Ibrahim Santana, uh, unfortunately, who is not going to be able to take part. But uh, there we go. They're getting ready to go. This is it, the final group. Now we've had five chances to watch the, the stage. Uh, what's your impressions now going into this final one? Have you seen certain areas where you think uh, drivers are making up big time and likewise can lose a lot of time? Or is it just all the way throughout? Yeah, I think you can see they're definitely off the start. They're pushing. There's no doubt about that on that tarmac section. Stage is probably short enough to save your tyres as well. It's not. They're not in a 40 kilometre stage. Here it's 9.83 kilometres or 6.11 miles. So it's not a particularly long stage. So it's, it's enough that you're able to push on that tarmac without completely damaging your studs. But I think these guys will have been watching that and they'll have been seeing those positions switching around in that last quarter there. So I really think that they're going to be on it. They're not going to let anything go in that last section. It's that close, isn't it? I think we were on board. I think it was Chris Van Handel in that last one. God had one small tank slapper, and then that was it. It went from second to fourth like that. So it was. Uh, it's a very, very demanding stage and a very demanding tournament. But that is why, at the end of it, the winner at the Autosport Show will get two and a half grand and a watch worth eighteen hundred pounds as well. So there we can see we're getting ready to go now. Watch the lights to the top right of the car. You'll see the five lights come on handbrakes will be down accelerator will be flat to the floor and once those lights go out we will be away five lights come on and they're off so away we go then on board we go straight away there with Matthew Zabato the Australian who's gone in the Ford as well so another Ford Focus let's see if this one can do any better than we saw with the whammy in the last one but uh, at the moment sitting up there in second place so a good start so far yeah, I mean, it's close. I mean, you can't even read out what's happening with those results. You just have to sit back and watch it happening at the minute. It is tight, as always, into these first corners. Fiesta is out on the field again. It'll be cool to speak to some of these drivers as well and find out um, a little bit. I might see if I can follow them on social media or see if they're tweeting about why they choose which car for these conditions. You know, I think the Open is the obvious choice. But that just shows every driver has got a different setup. Every driver's got a different driving style. And actually, in rally as well, th th these kind of fiestas are really popular with people from Scandinavia, you know, it's a really right. common car out there in those countries. Why would you say that is? I think it's probably accessible. Um, you know, they've just, Fiesta's, they've, there's a new R2 Turbo that's just come out this year and it has been very competitive in the European Championship, especially on the uphill sections. You know, rallies like Rome, where it's really abrasive tarmac, the cars are just able to pick it up almost like an R5 could out of the corner. It's almost like they have the power of the four wheel drive cars. So it's very difficult with the Peugeot or with the Opel. I know this is the old generation car, but with the modern generation car, it's very difficult for them to carry that momentum through the corners to keep the same speed at the end of the long straights. I have to say that did look very smooth for Robin Siren and indeed it was because uh, he is now moving up the field as a little bit of contact there uh, for uh, Matthew Zabato looked like he had some a uh, little bit of uh, touch with the wall uh, maybe some damage as well but immediately dropped down to fifth so he's lost a headlight and has also had damage to the front left as well we're being told so that is uh, really unfortunate there for uh, Matthew Zabato. That's really going to Should be cosmetic, though. I would say, you know, that is not an in that's not an incident in my car. <laughs> right, there we go. If it's cosmetic, it doesn't count, you know. <laughs> I've got to have three wheels to stop me on a stage. I would, you know, I think he's exactly the same. You can see he's not hanging about there, but really hugging the inside there of that corner. Yeah, this is uh, Robin Siren, our leader. Second place at the moment is uh, uh, Kaspar Mikalczuk, who is the Polish driver. Uh, third place is Alexandre Brun, the uh, French driver. Uh, and then we have uh, Matty Ahola, riskiest snake. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, let's see if he lives up to that name. We'll, uh, we'll go on board with him a little bit later. See just how uh, hard he is pushing it, how many risks. He is indeed taking, but Siren it is who leads at the moment as we complete the third section of the stage and climb uphill further. Uh, but as we get into the second half, that's where it starts to get really, really tough. Yeah, I think, you know, this is sunset conditions now. It's getting darker. I think that over in race control, I'm looking over there, I think they've picked tricky conditions over here this afternoon. <laughs> These are really challenging. You know, it's so difficult to see this black ice that I've been talking about. And I think at this kind of light, the headlights almost gleam off of it and you can't even see it's there. So, um, I, yeah, I've just got complete respect for these drivers because, you know, they're not feeling it through a car the way I would drive. 
I would feel it through my car, but oh no, we've had a driver disconnect. Yeah, that was Matthew Zabato, unfortunately, has disconnected. So uh, uh, I don't know if that just, he felt he had too much damage to continue or if it was just an unfortunate disconnect. But either way, uh, Matthew Zabato will not be qualifying through to the semi finals. So that means only one. Uh, will miss out of the driver's process remaining. of elimination. That's yeah, yeah. That's going to be well. That's going to be very heartbreaking if you're the only driver not to go through. Uh, then that is going to be very disappoint uh, disappointing indeed. At the moment, Risky Snake, uh, which is Matty Ehola, the Finnish driver, will uh, unfortunately not be going through. I'd say of all the ones we've seen so far. Uh, this is our sixth uh, stage now. We've had, of course, Group A's for Steam, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, group B for Steam and PlayStation. This is now Group B, Xbox. So this is our last group of drivers. And this one probably looks the most spread out we've seen, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it's not that, you know, we say spread out, but on the last yeah. split, I mean, there's still only 0 0.8 between the drivers in split yeah. four. Um, we do see our, our lead driver on pole, Robin Siren. He is the one that was the fastest on that last split, the fourth split. Um, before that, yeah, all within the same second. It's, you know, the pace here is unbelievable. Split one, though, maybe if we were going to be critical, we could say that they were, there was two seconds separating the drivers, so we had the fastest, was Reb Robert Siren, and then losing that bit of time was Risky Snake, actually, the finished driver, but tarmac section, so maybe he's coming into his own on this snowy section that's upcoming. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually, so we'll see if... Uh he indeed starts to uh, climb up the field. Matty Ahola has nothing to lose now. This is it. Just go for it in the snow. Why not take risks? It's in your name. So we'll uh, go on board with him shortly, I'm sure, and see if he is indeed uh, going to push it. We're on board uh, with the Peugeot Familiar at side. the moment. There you go. <laughs> Why don't you talk us through the, uh, this part of the station? Yeah, I was going to say, you can actually see there, we've just come onto the snowy section. Now, the glare that you get back from the snow in the headlights, maybe kind of half an hour later into the stage, so the organisers might be letting off, us off lightly, but half an hour into this, later into the stage, it would actually be difficult to separate those snow banks from the road. You know, you're looking, as I've mentioned earlier, you're looking for the grip in the snow compared to the icy sections. But if you go too deep into them, you can actually get sucked into them. So there's a really fine line between finding that grip and at high speeds as well. Sometimes it's really difficult to see the difference between a little bit of snow that you can play with with the tires and actually something that's going to suck you in or bounce you off and get you into some trouble. Well, this is Mikkel Zuk we are on board with. And at the moment, I'd say he's being caught here by uh, risky sake, Matty Ahola. If we switch to Matty Ahola now, we'll be able to see the rough difference in terms of position uh, on track so we're just coming through the left hand and now uh, we'll go back and have a look at where risky snake is and we'll be able to see roughly the difference uh, in distance there we can see it well it's about a corner isn't it it's uh, not far at all so one mistake from a hola and uh, he could drop down but it might not even be him because second place there alexandra brun is dropping down as well oh dear we've lost someone that was who have we lost there now that is that uh, Siren? Siren, we've yeah, we've lost Robin Siren. We've lost Robin Siren. Uh, well, I, I would no like to give this a uh, big eventful finish, but they're all going through. So there we go. Oh, there well, we go. yeah, I mean, if these drivers are paying attention, then, the, you know, this is rally tactics. They can save their tyres and cruise to the finish. <laughs> That's what we do on a stage. But big shame for those drivers that have lost it today. You know, Robin Siren had a good run. Uh, very fast on the, first, on, the, on the last split coming in that we had split number four up through there but coming into the last few corners and it doesn't look like it was um, a, a, you know it's like there's anything to play for anymore yeah well this is the last corner around the right hander there you can see no need to push hard now Risky Snake has uh, uh, well I'd, I'd hate to say he wouldn't have gone through anyway but certainly he has been uh, given that third place after some unfortunate uh, issues, mechanical issues, shall we say, uh, for the rest of the field. So that's our three drivers who are going to go through then. It is uh, going to be Kasper Mikhail Zuk, uh, as well as Alexandra Brun. And uh, as well as that, we will, of course, have Matty Ahola. So there we go. That's interesting. Though. I was looking at those stage times. 7.20 was the fastest on there. And all the wow. others have been 7.04, 7.05 around that. So Well, that says a big thing going into the semifinals, isn't it? Because they do get combined now, uh, yeah. Group A and Group B. Uh, the top three from each go through. So we're going to have six each in the semi-finals. 18 then will go down to six. So 
Uh, wow. Well, there we go. Brutal that, racing. That's, that's <laughs> it. What, what, were your, what were your thoughts overall? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess that last event sums up Rally Monte Carlo. The yes. amount of times that I have watched Rally Monte Carlo and seen drivers that are at the front pushing hard, just kind of peeling off the road one by one by one. And sometimes it ends up driver who was finishing top 10 at the end of the day on the first day of the rally will take the overall lead by the end of it because it is that brutal and the conditions are that treacherous. It is survival, isn't it? It's it just really is. Surviving it to the end. So, well, that's uh, all of our quarterfinals done now. We'll get the results up in just a second and remind you uh, of who has qualified through. But uh, I think one thing that we did see there, Katie, is the quality of the field is very, very high. It is very, very close as well. If we thought that was brutal, the quarterfinals, the semifinals is going to be even worse. Yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult and it's it's very difficult for them now. They haven't got anything else to base it on. You know, in Rallycross, they could see the other cars. They could see if they were being overtaken and they knew they could use their lines to try and stop that from happening now it's a very individual sport and it is like proper rallying because they have no idea until they get to the end of the stage and i'm sure there are going to be plenty of these drivers that have been absolutely kicking themselves yeah. when they've got to the end and they've realized oh my gosh it was three hundredths of a second that i was off on that nine kilometer stage with all of that ice all of the snow the spectators the cars parked at the side of the road all of those distractions and it's come down to that final margin what well, the semi-finals as well two stages so you kind of get a, a breather in the middle uh, and then you get a, a chance to to try and make up some time in that second stage. What are your thoughts on the two stages? Of course, we've got uh, Finland and Greece. Finland, huge, huge jump. So uh, risk w with risk will come reward, I guess, there. And then Greece, it's uh, lots of hairpins and uh, a huge elevation change at the end. I'd say the opportunity for us to see our drivers flat out will be Finland. Yes. You know, I am excited yes. to see that. That That's is going to be, be on the limit. But also, they're going to be choosing their group A cars. So they're yes. going to have that much more power and they've got more choice in the next round as well so we're going to see their individual characters coming out you know I'm expecting to see some Scandinavians in the Mitsubishi <laughs> Evo 6s um, maybe the Brits will be in Colin McRae's Subaru and um, yeah it'll be really cool to see that but I think for the last race of the day in Greece it will be a little bit more back to the tactics in Monte Carlo it's survival you know there's big rocks that you know there's steep drops as well you can't be bouncing off of any kind of corner to go off onto the outside because you're going to drop off the cliff you know it's yeah. pretty brutal uh, there'll be punches I'm sure well, how we're going to do it is we're going to have the first lot of semi-finals uh, in Finland uh, up first, and then we're going to go into the second stages. So they're going to get a breather in the middle, and we're going to have a, a good idea of who is where and how much time some people have to make up as well. And if they know they say have you know two seconds to, to make up, they're going to be really really pushing it. So uh, that is, I think that's going to be an even uh, that's going to be real rally, isn't it? Having the the two stages and time to make up or a gap to hold. Yeah, and I think that also will come down again to their setup. You know, yeah. that comes that comes down to your tire choice. That comes down to you know they've they've seen you know for example they've seen the Evo Six win in Finland. Are they going to choose that because they know it's yes. a reliable car? They know it suits so those surfaces. It'll be really interesting to see their thoughts leading into the semi final. Well, they can change car as well, so they're going to, I'm sure, know which car they're going to go in in each one. But we're talking about the semi-finals. They're coming up a little bit later on. Uh, let's recap, though, with the results and see who has made it to those semi-finals. Uh, so here we, go, here we are, the six drivers going through on the Steam platform. Lucas Mateja, Yuna Pankinen, Sam Thornton, uh, Luca Giacomin, Jonathan Schaefer and Gerard Pesch. Then we go to the PlayStation and we have Jose Rodriguez, Andre Belchior, uh, Nicolo Adrizone, uh, Robin Johnson, Alexandra Hus, Quinton Dalomo trying to join his brother at the Autosports sh show is through to the semis. And then Dave Marshall won his quarterfinal. Paul Begin as well with Carlos Lopez, Casper uh, Mikelzuk, Alexandra Brun uh, and Matty Ahola, of course, the f uh, final three drivers we just watched there. So that is it quarterfinals is done it's time to have a, a breather for us but we're going to be back very shortly uh, for the semi-finals 6 30 uh, uk time is when you need to join us uh, and that is when the semi-finals uh, will begin uh, there we can see there we go uh, look at that magic uh, 6 5 uh, 6 30 is when the semi-finals are going to start you can see us in the same places again so on motorsport.tv and on the dirt rally uh, youtube and uh, facebook pages so that is it from us you've enjoyed it quarterfinals great time i mean i was expecting drama in monaco and monaco <laughs> gave us drama it did indeed roll on the semis join us 6 30 we'll be back to decide which six are going to go to the finals Ready?